So there were a number of really great speakers, particularly Dennis Kucinich, who I think if you guys are going to listen, if you haven't listened to any of the coverage from the Rage Against the War Machine rally in D.C., um, if there's one person who I would recommend listening to, listen to the, I guess, 10-minute speech that Dennis Kucinich gave. It was really great. If you're having to prioritize who to listen to, that that would be Peter's recommendation. He really hit uh, the right notes. I thought that, well, again, the last three speakers were Dennis Kucinich, Tulsi Gabbard, and Ron Paul. And all three respectable to me. In terms of their message. Now, obviously, we have strong disagreements with the likes of Ron Paul and Tulsi Gabbard. But, but I, ha- well, you know what, though? I have a lot of respect for Ron Paul. Yeah. I used to have a lot more respect for Tulsi. Um, you know, she had courage at a time when people didn't. I, I respect that. But since then, I just feel like she's just not somebody that I would really see a lot of things, you know, eye to eye with. But I have a lot of respect for Ron Paul. Yeah. I do. For, yeah. uh, for you know, and I don't agree with him on a lot of things. Again, when Ron, unfortunately, at the end of his speech was drifting into austerity territory. Again, you know, you could say what you want about whether or not right. you agree with MMT. One thing I can assure you that is different is micro versus macro economics and the ability to actually print money and curtail inflation as a result. And we should look into having um, Clint come on and talk when we have Steve come on. And I just kind of want to sit there with some popcorn and watch that. Thank you, Dirtbag. Uh, obviously, I, I actually did not. He, I, I know Roger Waters was, uh, he was like the last last, but his was a recorded. Absolutely double K. Uh, I don't, I don't, I yeah. mean, he and I w- disagree on a lot of politics. Yeah. I just, I have respect for him and, and, and that he, and they were never corporate and, sellouts. Yeah, and, and there's just, there's that, yeah, that's, things. and that's, you know, that's kind of like the thing with Thomas Massey. You know, you have these representatives that from just from a logistics perspective, they really believe in this idea of austerity, that there is a limit to resources, not a finite uh, amount of resources, and that you have to conserve. I'd actually argue we've already taken more than our fair share. Oh, we certainly have. Uh, But I would definitely say that there were some key people that spoke. there, the message that was there, uh, Negrani, uh, I actually, uh, I, I didn't see all of it. I actually did not see Chris Hedges' speech. Chris Hedges has been a guest on our podcast before. He is. I mean, an, obviously we're big fans. Yeah. Exceptional. <laughs> like he's, exceptional. Yeah. He's, uh, the, he's the real deal. But I, <clears throat> but I have to say that there are certain people that were involved in this event and I don't have a problem with the Libertarian Party being involved. They have been very consistent about an anti-war message. They have been very consistent about, you know, knowing that when it comes to how we spend money in this country, that we spend way, way, way too much on the military industrial complex, much less the wars. The problem is that there are people who lead this effort who want to be at the forefront, who want the microphone when it is really not their place to have it. Or they're just not, they're not a person that is going to best serve the mission in general in terms of coalition building. And it's more about their ego and their vanity project than it actually is about serving the mission. And to me, some of those types of people, it's clear. I know it isn't so clear to some to a lot of people, which is why a lot of people have followings that they have. But um, <clears throat> I don't not affiliate with things to spite people because I just don't. If I'm going to like something, I'm going to like it. I don't, if somebody's with it, I'll still support it if I think it's a good plan. Um, but I still think that marketing matters when you're trying to make a movement bigger and bigger. And when you put toxic type of people as speakers, it isn't about whether or not they're part of a group. You know, anybody could join. Like, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, it's not about who wants to support it. I'll support mission, but I don't know. I feel like you should put your best foot forward when you have speakers should have the broadest reach and not be, and be the least toxic representation. And not only that, if you're going to have certain people basically be the lead organizers, if you will, that you know already come with a heavy amount of baggage that are going to turn off a considerable amount of people, I guarantee you, I wonder if the the lead organizers were just simply the Libertarian Party. 
I am going to, I've said this before, I will say it again. No one in their right mind should ever take the movement for a People's Party seriously. And there are many reasons not to take them seriously. We've had shows about this. We've spoken with people that were like in that and the higher up of that. And so this is something we've covered. We don't need to like, you know, rehash it. But that's not that's not a serious political party. It's just not. And for those who spoke at this particular event and felt that the effective way to deal with the fact that there were organizers that dropped out, there were a lot of people supposedly going to show up, didn't show up that the proper response to that is to attack them for not agreeing with your standards is tantamount for failure. They promoted this thing very hard for a long time. This was going on for several months. They had ample opportunity to promote this, especially not just in DC, but in Southern Maryland, Northern Virginia, West Virginia, They had an opportunity to bring in a lot of people. There was about a thousand people that showed up. If your intention, and and a thousand people is not anything to sneeze at. It's a decent- For there, it's not a bit, like I'm just, for that that locale, for the level of speakers, for this, like for what this event was, it, a thousand is not that much. That's what I, like proportionate to what this kind of could have been, I think. And what a lot of people don't understand, and Negrani, the, the message is fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. I'm, we're all about the anti-war. If I lived near there, I would have gone. Yeah. Like, I if I gone. lived near there and I was in driving distance to that, I would have gone. I, I am not averse to anti-war rallies. I've been to quite a few. I'm all about that. What we're saying is, is that when you put certain people as spokespeople, and actually, Metalopoly, I wasn't talking about Jimmy. I wasn't. I know who I'm talking about. And I know who I think he's talking about, but it isn't Jimmy. Um, But the the point is, like, I will affiliate with something if I agree with it, period. It doesn't matter if there's people that are with that. I don't I don't have to like everybody. We're saying that the best way to serve a mission is to not necessarily use people that alienate a lot of people. Yeah. As spokespeople. And also give credit. Neoliberal tears. Give credit. uh, Jill Stein. Say what you want about her. She has been a very consistent, active anti-war voice. I voted for her. a very long time. That was my and choice so in that 16. was the, uh, well, in Florida, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter anyway, because uh, there was no but, universe. But in, in just, uh, no, I, I, I've said. We've, we've talked had, about this. We've had Nick Brana on the podcast. Yeah, we've just talked about it. We just it. don't feel the need to keep like hashing it and giving it like, you know, airtime. But no, we've talked about it. This is not a secret. But you have to remember that if, if those individuals want to show up, if they want to support the cause, there is nothing wrong with that. They should support the cause. This is my point. That's all. Nick Brana was the MC for this event. That's just toxic. Are you, try, are you trying to succeed or are you trying to fail like there was- and say, see, see, they didn't want to help us because of so-and-so? If he really cared, if the organizers, if mm-hmm. the speakers, if their intent is to see this succeed, you see, people are not fools. Tulsi's not a fool. Jill Stein's not a fool. No. Dennis Kucinich is not a fool. Ron Paul's not Ron a fool. Poole is, Ron Paul is definitely. definitely not a fool. You can say whatever you want. But if the goal of this event is to attract a real anti-war movement and build but then again and here's what i find interesting so this is sort of and i didn't think of this before but remember when they did the movement the launch for the movement for the people's party and it was amazing speakers and it was cornell west and chris hedges and nina turner and it was it was amazing and then nothing happened and it wasn't like it nothing happened it went nowhere and and we've covered as to why we've had a whole show we've talked about this but why would you think that the same people that had a rally that led to nowhere would be the best group of people to be leading another rally. And off rail, like I don't get this it. This is why Medea Benjamin is an OG. She is a legitimate. She still showed up at this event, even though she didn't speak, because she cares about the mission. The mission is more important to Medea than the politics. 
even though people play politics. But there's enough people in Code Pink who recognize that there are certain people that if you lock arms with them, it's not a question of whether they agree that there should be an anti-war movement. We all agree. It's about knowing that this person is going to actually hurt the movement because the person who's on the fence about whether they want to get involved or not sees that person there. They're like, I'm out. Right. It's not like people are drawn in by it. It's sort of like how we feel about our congresswoman. You know, you've fixed audience. It's fixed. You're not bringing in, you're not winning over new people with certain people. You're just not. And Medea is the real deal. hundred thousand. Like know her personally, love her. She is the real deal. So if she's at odds I'm going to say nine out of 10 times, I would think I'd probably be wherever she is. Like, like that's probably the more, the more moral position, shall we say. So whoever she's at odds with, I, I'm going with her. That's what I say. And, you know, as we've stated, anyone who is new to our podcast, and we're obviously grateful for a lot of you who have joined us tonight. Uh, you know, I'm anti-war because I know that war is a racket. Medea has been on the show. It's been a really, really long time. And yeah, you know what? We, we, should, we need to get her back on. Yeah. Um, the truth is, is that Medea is always gone. She really is. She's, and, and when I say gone, I mean like somewhere in the mountains of Peru, you know, Bolivia. Like she's really out there or, you know, somewhere in the Middle East. Like Medea is, she's very, very busy. Like it's truthfully. Idea, you know, Medea has done such amazing stuff to really bring so many of us together. I had the opportunity to meet Julian Assange's father and brother as a result of Medea. Well, this is what happened. I mean, what we've had, I was reached out, like um, Julian Assange's brother reached out to me at one point after we did our Assange live stream and we ended up hosting a local event um, for Gabriel and John Shipton. That's his brother and his father. And Medea was so generous and so kind as to arrange for us to be able to use where she lives, which is this amazing little like farm co-op place in the middle of Miami. It's very cool. And there's, and there's space and it's just, and, and so, and also she provided accommodations for Gabriel and John while they were in town. And it was just really cool. Jack. And I feel like, well, I, I mean, this is where I feel like a good catalyst when I, am I able to bring together people like, you know, the Shiftons and Medea. Jessica, you're, you're, you're complaining to the wrong people. We support the anti-war movement. Yeah, we also, yeah, yeah, yeah. We also understand what it takes to build a coalition. Again, I would have gone. I wouldn't have cared who was talking. I wouldn't have like cut my nose to spite my face. I am a body that would be happy to stand out anti-war. I don't care. If you can't see that there are certain people that were involved in this who, even if they were there, who cares if they're there? They have every right to be there. They should be supporting the cause. But if people can't see that there are certain individuals that had no business getting on that microphone and sure as hell had no business running the event, I don't know what to tell you. If you have a thousand people there, that's nice. We're just talking it's strategy. It's not changing anything. If 10,000 people were there, then people would be talking because it would have filled the whole mall. It would have backed up all the way to the Washington Monument and people would have noticed that. And they would have been saying, like, what, what, what's going on here? What's well, the all these truth people is, with doing these things, here? size matters. And and I really do I think- I totally had the biggest yeah. crowd. I had the biggest yeah, you crowd the biggest you've crowd. ever seen, believe me. So, you know, but, you know, when, when I hear somebody talk like Medea, that holds a lot more weight and a lot more credibility. And it brings in a lot more, you know, I'd say- coalition building like it just lends itself better to that than certain people and again it wouldn't doesn't affect me i'm caring about the anti-war movement i don't care if it's jimmy and nick and whatever i don't care they could talk forever it doesn't matter what i'm saying is is i don't think as far as the movement in its best interest of bringing in people and being you know progressing forward that those people that that's the best way to go with that that's all we're saying Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.